today. You, can you imagine the world we're living in? And I'm supposed to sit here and say that's nice, that's good, and that women should breastfeed in the military while on duty? It's an insane world. It's melting down. I'm screaming from a rooftop. The house is on fire. I know. I know. So true. Well, thank you for saying you're going to vote for Trump. No, I'm telling you, you see the moral meltdown. It started very, very light. And it goes on and it gets worse by the day. Thursday, Ashton Carter, who should be tried for crimes against humanity, will allow troops on duty to breastfeed. Now, I don't mind if you're breastfeeding if you're working in an office in the Pentagon. What do you mean on duty? You're on the front lines with ISIS and you blow a whistle and say that now said you can breastfeed and ISIS is going to put down their Kalashnikovs and their rusty blades? Maniacs! Psycho! Is that too brash for you? I'm very sorry. I hope it's not offensive. But here's the topper of the meltdown of the West. It's on michaelsavage.com. My headline. It shows a woman with a fake woman who was her husband, who became a man in England, uh, became a woman in England. And my headline is Death of the West, Why God Sent the Muslims. Now, I'm going to talk about that another day because I've been thinking long and hard about what's going on in the world and why Muslims, in a strange way, and I'm not talking about ISIS, I'm talking about religiously correct Muslims could be the, sa the savior of the West. I know you haven't heard this before, but I'm saying it to you like it is. This married couple are both looking for the same thing, Mr. Wright. Three years ago, Claire Atkins was stunned when her husband of six years, beefy bodybuilder Marcus Atkins, well, that, okay, told her he wanted to be a woman. So he sold his motorcycle to pay for his new breasts, changed his name to Celeste, and this December he became a uh, transformation job. And now... He is her wing woman as they prowl the English countryside for the man of their dreams. My friends, this is not what I say is the thing that this, this world needs right now. It's the opposite of what this world needs. And by the way, they're still raising three children. It's the death of the West. You heard me. I stand by those words. Is that too brash for you? I hope not. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. How are you? How are you? How are we doing? Dr. Trump, you're the doctor that we need to heal America. It's been amazing, Michael. It's been like an amazing period of time. And I'm in Iowa right now. In fact, I'm going to make a speech in about uh, 9.2 minutes. And, but I said I have to take Michael before I get up. Uh, I mean, I have, to, I have to speak to you. You've been so supportive, and I want to thank you, Michael. Well, I wish I could say the same about uh, my fellow... Uh let us say, travelers in, in the conservative universe. I don't know what they're thinking. You're the only hope we have. Everyone I know who's worth anything in the world, and it doesn't matter whether they're rich or poor, worth something in terms of brains, is going to vote for you, loves you. Now, I personally, Don, I'll have to ask you, is Iowa that important? Well, I think psychologically it is. I mean, I've seen it. Uh, now, actually, for 16 years, they haven't picked the winner, when I always tell them that. You haven't picked a winner in 16 years. Come on, folks, you've got to pick a winner this time. But I will say that for me, you, you see what's going on in New Hampshire. I have a 28-point lead in the, next, uh, in the last poll that came out about an hour ago. A 28-point lead. I never even heard of a lead like that. That sounds like an incumbent president running against, uh, like, nobody. But, uh, well, of course, so but New Hampshire may be more representative of a certain population of America, in my opinion, Donald, and I, I'm not denigrating the good people of Iowa. Believe me, I'm on three stations in Iowa, but we're living in a different America than it was in 1820. Yeah, but it's an amazing custom. It's amazing tradition. The people here are incredible, and it's sort of a, it's a way of life. It's an amazing group of people. I love it. I really love it. I like it. And I told them, I said, if I win, you know, there's been a movement to move Iowa down to the middle of the pack or even the back, and I said, it's never going to happen with me. It's, it's an incredible process. Even the whole caucusing thing, you know, it makes you, it makes you work harder. And there's something okay about that. But it Did makes you ever think you'd have to work, Donald, in your whole life, have you ever worked as hard as you are for this presidential campaign? I'll bet not. This is about, uh, this is getting right up there. I mean, I've been uh, working. 
<laughs> this is tougher than building an Atlantic City when you started. This is tougher than building in Manhattan, I'll tell you. But it's uh, it's been a it's been a great process, and you know I'm very uh, I'm encouraged by when I look at the polls. Uh, they have me leading in Iowa. They have me leading in New Hampshire, South Carolina, Nevada. They have me leading everywhere and nationally. Uh, and the- well, Ted, Ted, Ted Cruz rolled his eyes. The only thing missing was holding up snakes to heaven. Yeah, What's well, he doing? Been, you have been so incredible to me, Michael, and I really appreciate it. And you really have been, too, right from the beginning. And I- well, you know, you know I, I'm not doing it because I want anything, Donald. The truth is, is that I'm kind of independent of need. The issue is America is in desperately bad shape. America is so sick that it's going to take a strong man with a tremendously powerful ego like yours to override the psychosis uh, called politics. That's why we're all behind you, Donald. We know that you can actually get things done. I'll get it done, Michael. I'll tell you what, people will be so happy and they'll be so proud of our country again. And it's like, you know, make America great again. It's a great theme. It's a great slogan. But it's true, and it's not going to be as difficult as people think. However, if we go through another three years, four years of the Obama stuff with Hillary or whoever it happens to be, I don't know if Hillary's going to be able to run with this, with the things that are coming down now with the FBI and with what she's done. I don't know that she's going to be able to run, to be honest with you. Plus, a new poll just came out. Now she's behind in Iowa. That would be a big loss for her, I think, Michael, losing Iowa and then New Hampshire, I think. I mean, if she, you mean if she loses to the commie from Brooklyn? Yeah, he's probably is a he's probably a communist, but let's call him a serious socialist. But he probably could go a step further than that, right? Donald, last question of the day: Are you gathering demographics which Republicans have had a hard time with in the past, meaning minorities? I know that I hear it on my show: minorities who won't vote for a Republican in their whole life want want to vote for you. Is that what your polls, posters are showing? I think so. And in fact, yesterday in the New York Post, there was a big article where I'm leading with Hispanics and, and people that are in the country legally, Hispanics. are. You probably saw that article. It was an amazing article. But I'm also getting a lot of people, and we see it even here, where a lot of Democrats are coming over and they're changing their party affiliation to the Republican. Because don't forget, the Republicans have a structural disadvantage. There are fewer of them. And various other things you know they have a state advantage a state disadvantage because certain states are automatically you know with the with the college with the electoral college certain states are absolutely going democrat what happens and this is important michael i think i have a chance of getting new york i have a chance of getting michigan i have a chance of getting you know a lot of states that a lot of these people these other candidates it would never even be a possibility to get them and they're saying that trump is going to win for instance michigan i'm going to win michigan uh, we're going to do great in Ohio and Florida and different places that, frankly, and Virginia is another one, and West Virginia, places that have not been good to the Republicans, Trump is going to win. And if that happens, you end up having a tremendous advantage. And none of the other candidates are going to get there, Michael. So, you know, Donald, what final message do you want to leave before the caucuses tonight? on the Savage Nation. We're on three big stations in Iowa. The whole world is watching Iowa, even though I don't think it's, it's structurally that significant. It is symbolically very significant. I hope you win. Uh, you've been running a tough campaign. Any final message to the world? I think only, Michael, that I've been working very hard. I've spent a lot of time out here. I've spent a lot of time in all of the different places, New Hampshire, and the next after that would be South Carolina, all amazing places. But I will tell you this, the people of this country and you've known this better than anybody, the people of this country are incredible. More than anything else, that's what I have found. You have to see the love for this country. The mm-hmm. people are incredible, and I leave that message. And, of course, always vote for Trump. Right? Donald, you want to hear the message that's the winning one? Borders, language, culture. Even though you haven't used my slogan, in essence, that's what you have been saying in a different way. And that's why I'm 100% behind you, as are my listeners. I'll let you go. Thank you so much. We wish you luck, and hopefully we'll see you at least once before you're president. 100%, Michael. I'll speak to you a lot, and you take care of yourself. And you're right, we're going to have very, very strong borders. Those days are over where people just flow into the country like water. It's not going to happen that way. So I want to you, Michael. You take care of yourself. Thank you, Donald. Thank you very much, Mr. Trump. Savage. All right, that was fresh right off the press delivered to you fresh from the kitchen of the Savage Nation right here on your local station. 
Now, we talked about a lot. You say there was no substance. Well, he said it. This campaign's tougher than building in Manhattan. If I were a journalist and I was a fair journalist, I would quote that. Trump says campaign has been tougher than building in Manhattan. That's a screaming headline. That should be everywhere. Page six, New York Post. Trump says tougher than building in Manhattan. Only someone from Manhattan knows what that really means. Uh, you know, I can't go into it because I never built in Manhattan, but I know about building in Manhattan a little bit. Like, let's put it to you this way. You want to build in Manhattan, you need concrete. You want concrete, it comes from one source. You want to get concrete, you deal with that source. Now, I'm not dealing with sources right now because I'm not a chef. I'm dealing with sources, which is a little different than sources. And I live near Sausalito to make it even more complicated if you don't speak English. -er. But we're talking about immigration. Here's a story that came out a minute ago. Are you ready? Remember there were three escaped, very dangerous inmates in California last week, and one of them was caught? Of course, they were hiding in San Francisco, the other two. They came to the place where criminals hide amongst the homeless on a regular basis. Escaped inmate was ordered deported to Vietnam in 1998. Are you listening to this? Are you listening to this? One of the three inmates who escaped from an Orange County jail was ordered deported to Vietnam in 1998, but remained in America and, wrapped, and racked up a lengthy rap sheet. He wasn't working. He was ordered removed in 1998, but because of lax deportation policies, he was allowed to ply his gangster trade and not be deported. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when Donald Trump becomes president, there's going to be a deportation exodus like you've never seen in this country. Many of them will leave themselves because they're not going to wait for the government to find them and throw them out. You hear what I'm saying to you? There will be deportations as sure as I'm sitting here. All of the good people who work at ICE are finally going to be able to do their job. All the people at the FBI are going to be able to do their job. All the people in the new Justice Department will be able to do their job. There will be a big day of reckoning in the United States of America. He was ordered deported in 1998, and he continued to stay in America because of lax policies. He was arrested just last year on charges including kidnapping and torture. He abducted a marijuana dealer, burned them with a blowtorch, and cut off his penis. He was supposed to have been deported in 1998, but he wasn't deported because of lax deportation policies in the United States of America. Now, what I'm going to do for you is this. You heard Donald Trump. The phone number here is 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. If you care to comment upon this interview or say anything about the Caucasian caucus today that's relative to to what you just heard. And we're going to play a soundbite of Father Ted Cruz in a few minutes, shaking a snake in the air, holding a Bible, and literally eating his eyes as he appeals to some segment of the Iowa voters. If Even if I were an evangelical, I wouldn't buy that act. That's all I can tell you. Any man who comes knocking on my door with too big a Bible, I send them packing. Back in a minute. It is. Uh, the world's changing. I've been in the radio business 21 years. He's the front runner. They're calling me now to be on this show. That tells you something about Donald Trump that you need to know. Now, you can spin it any way you want. Oh, yeah, he's going on your show because he kisses Bud. Why, why do you expect? What's the big deal? No, that's not the reason why. He's got lots of people who'd like to have him on, the, on, on their show. Lots of people. NBC, CBS, ABC, uh, CNN, Fox News, Megyn Kelly, uh, M Mr. Leprechaun. They all would like to have him on as much as possible. Why did he call to be on my show? Why does he need my little radio show? There's a reason for it. You want to hear the reason? In terms of overall numbers, this is not the biggest radio show. It's big enough, not the biggest. The man reaches a certain level of truth with me. And he feels more comfortable with me, I believe, than with most, if maybe anyone else in the media. There's an, uh, almost a, an affinity. Let's put it to you that way. I almost said kinship, but it cannot be considered a kinship. There's an affinity between Donald Trump and I, both in our desire to speak bluntly and the truth and truthfully, and our delivery is very similar, even though we come from, you know, different sides of the same, of the track that runs through Queens, New York. I've said that to you before. And it's an important thing to understand. He also, 
I've been thinking about this. For those of you who are not from the area, and I've been gone for so 